got a problem where you hear a weird sound coming from the outdoor unit. Feels like the outdoor unit's running, but I don't have any warm air blowing out of here. Okay, so the outdoor unit's running, but I don't have any warm air. So what we should do is go ahead and I'm not going to turn the whole unit off because we have to wait another five minutes for the delay, but I am going to disconnect the power to this outdoor section before I start to pull the panel off, and then we'll put that back in. I'm also going to go ahead and hook up a clamp on amp meter, and I'm going to measure the amp draw on the component I think is giving me trouble, which is not the fan. The fan's working fine. Uh, but I want to make sure I get the wire that goes to the other component, which is the compressor. And if I look on the wiring diagram, I can find the compressor on the pictorial. And uh, the compressor says it's got a yellow, a red, and a black wire going to it that falls back in the back. So it's probably going to be a yellow, which there's a yellow. Oh, but that's my contactor one. Here's another yellow going to the capacitor, so I can get the yellow one, and then a red one going to the compressor. So I've got to kind of pull the wires and feel which one's what going to the compressor. So it's probably going to be one of these ones here. So I'll go ahead and I'm actually going to hook this black one. I'm going to pick red or black and we're going to do uh, amps, AC amps, and I'm going to put it at the highest setting at 20. So we'll measure the amps and then I'll plug the disconnect back in. Can you get that up there? Can you see that? Let me go ahead and plug it in. So fan motor's running. But amp draw on the compressor is 47, and then it dropped out. Now it's nothing. That's not right. Now if I take a look at the nameplate, the nameplate tells me that the compressor, the running load amps, is supposed to be 13.4. The lock rotor amps is 58. We're reading 48. 48 is pretty close to 58, so we got the locked rotor amps happening here. That means that compressor is not spinning. And I could confirm that, now it's not even powered up. I could confirm that by putting the gauges on and seeing that there's not gonna be any pressure difference. But without putting the gauges on, just feeling the line, I can already feel that this one's supposed to be cold and this one's supposed to be warm and they're both the same temperature. So the compressor, oh, we got 47 again. Then nothing. Okay, so it's trying to start like it's a bad compressor. But what's the one thing that turns on the compressor? So you got one, Three wires going to it. One of the coils is the run winding, and that's the one that's getting energized right now. What's the other one? The start winding. The start winding comes from this capacitor here. So this capacitor is what's supposed to be energizing to get the, the motor to spin for that first time to get it out of locked rotor ramps and get it into running load amps, the RLA. So I want to go ahead and I'm going to check this capacitor. Now this is the thing that most often gets misdiagnosed misdiagnosed, okay? Because they think the compressor's bad, because it's locked up, they think the compressor's seized, and they don't finish checking out the other component, which is the capacitor. Some have a dual cap, where they run both the fan motor and the compressor. This is a dual cap, and so is this one, but they have a separate cap for the fan motor. That's a little odd. Normally they just run them both off one, but this one's got two splits. So this capacitor, even though it's a dual cap, meaning one side's for the compressor, the other side's for the fan, uh, this one, they're only using one side of the dual cap. So on this here, so what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna disconnect the power. And if I suspect the capacitor's bad, it could have a charge in it. Even though I've disconnected the power, it's like a battery, it can store a charge. So I wanna make sure that it doesn't have any voltage so I'll take my leads and I'm gonna, I'm gonna discharge it using my voltmeter. Uh, you can also use a two 20,000 ohm resistor. I would need to find a 20,000 ohm resistor and before I touch it, I would take the ohm resistor, a 20,000 ohm resistor and bleed it out, um, bleed it out across the terminals. So I could use one of these or I could just use the voltmeter, it's got a resistor in it too. And I just want to make sure there's no power left between here and here, and then I'll check it to ground on both sides. So, volts AC, set it the highest setting. I got nothing there, and then I'll check it to ground too. And you might see some guys take a screwdriver and short it that way. That's a little dangerous. The capacitor could explode and it does do an arc flash. So, we're good. There's no power on there, so I can go ahead and we can get these leads off. Alright, uh, that one 
snap docks. It was weak right there, a big quarter inch ago. So it could have been a bad connection. That lead just snapped off, so it got bent from somebody not using the needle nose to pull it on and off. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go right here and we're gonna check microfarad on our meter. All right, so you're gonna set this to microfarads because that's how we rate the capacitors, not volts, not amps, not ohms, okay? It's gonna be microfarads. And on the side, there's a reading. It should be 40 on one side and five on the other. And you see that funny U? Looks like a backwards U. That means micro and the F is for farads. So that funny U means micro farads. So I should read about 40 micro farads why don't you hold that for me? Between common and herm, which is our compressor. So there's common and there's herm. Oh, no microfarad. So this capacitor's bad. I could also check the fan circuit too. Now, I just happen to have another. You wouldn't match it. Where's my other capacitor at? It was right here. Here it is on the ground. So you would match it with the rating. So this one here is supposed to be a 35.5 because that's the one that came out of the unit here. This is actually the good one I swapped out to bug it with. So really you're gonna match it with both the rating of microfarads and the volts AC. Now the volts AC is the maximum voltage that gets generated by the start winding. So the motor might be running at 240 volts, but because the start winding has more wraps, it actually becomes a generator when it's running, when it's in run mode. And the generator actually sends up to 370 or up to 440 volts back to the capacitor. So the capacitor's got to be rated for the amount of voltage coming back from the start winding once it gets rolling and starts generating power on that one winding. So if you take a look now on the meter, we're going to go ahead and check between common and herm. And we should be reading 35 microfarad plus or minus 5%. Okay, so it go up or down by about two and a half percent on either side. So 34.6, that's good. And I can also go ahead and check between these two. All right, so that's a five. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this one in and then we'll reconnect everything back up. I'm gonna need a wire nut and a spade connector out of that bucket spade connector out of that bucket. Give me one of those wires with the spade connector on it out of the bucket. We'll just tie it together. Oh uh, no, give me a yellow. So we're just going to splice it right here for now, and we can put an actual terminal on. Yeah, actually the orange would be better. These wires are small, number 14. Doesn't pull a lot of current on the star winding. All right, so that's good. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, actually, before I put that back in, the yellow one is start, and then the red one's going to be my common. It's just jump from the run side over to the other one, so we're good on that. So I go ahead and I can put my comment on the red one there, and the herm for the start winding on the compressor. And I think we got one other thing here that doesn't look right, and we'll check that out in a minute too. So we're good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and get my amp probe, set it back on amps. Again, get my black wire, and if everything's working right, should be getting back, it'll start off at 47 lock rotor, but shortly after, should go down to about 15 or below on that running load amp, so. Ah, different sound. And again, started out with about 47, and down, and we're about 5.7 on the running load amps for the compressor. So, start to feel the lines. This one's getting cool. This one's getting warm. Probably no need to hook up the gauges. The problem here wasn't a refrigeration side. You could if you want to check out Superheat Sub Pool and check the charge while you're here. But there's different.